In this video, I'll answer the question, what is a benchmark? And how do we do benchmarking? Like so many other terms in project management and business in general, such as milestone or gateway, the word benchmark is used as a metaphor. Originally, a benchmark was a mark that masons chiselled into stone. It made a bench that allowed surveyors to place their levelling rod accurately. A benchmark is a standard reference point for making accurate survey measurements. And we use the word in the same way. A benchmark is a reference point that serves as a standard against which we can measure or judge other things. In business, and therefore in many projects, a benchmarking is a comparison of another organization's products or services or practices against our own. The aim is to understand the differences and therefore to design a project which can bring our performance up to and possibly beyond the level of the organisation we're comparing ourselves to. The choice of which organisation or organisations to benchmark ourselves against can be critical. The default would, of course, be the industry leaders in the activity that we're interested in benchmarking. But sometimes it can be more pragmatic and indeed more effective to make another choice. We might choose a close competitor when we're looking at issues that are relevant to what we and they both do. Perhaps we would look at a comparable but better performer so that the performance boost we try to achieve is realistic and achievable. Maybe we want to look at an organisation from a very different sector and we would do this if what we really wanted to do was to innovate and make substantial changes in the hope of getting a real jump on our competition. Bringing in new ideas from alternative places is a great way to do that. Or we might simply look at other parts of our own organisation to harness best practices that our colleagues have already discovered. With any of these, benchmarking can serve either incremental or continuous improvements, or it can serve dramatic or transformational change. And we can apply benchmarking in many circumstances. For example, to customer facing products or services, or to internal processes, to human led activities, or to the technology that serves them. And we can apply it to either the competitive position of our organisation in the marketplace or to the back office efficiency that will enable us to boost profitability on the same level of sales activity. Let's have a look at the benchmarking process. The basic process is simple. However, in the real world, there is a lot of subtlety and it can really pay to engage expert advice in building your benchmarking process. After all, as Peter Drucker is often quoted as saying, what gets measured gets managed. If your benchmarking exercise measures the wrong thing, then you're going to be managing the wrong thing and therefore the whole process could prove futile or possibly even detrimental. By the way, it's quite possible that Peter Drucker didn't actually say what gets measured gets managed. The phrase has also been attributed to a range of other people. It's also equally true that not everything that matters can be measured. Sometimes, therefore, we have to use proxy measures. These are measures of things that seem to correlate closely with the things we actually care about. Our aim, however, is to find the best set of measures for the things that really matter. And often these are referred to as key performance indicators or KPIs. And I'll put a link to our video about those in the description. 
Our simple benchmarking process has four steps. And step one is to plan. Determine what area of performance you want to improve and also decide where you want to benchmark yourself against. Next, build a team and then work with them to study your own performance to determine the data that you need to collect. And then reach out to the people at the organizations you want to benchmark yourself against to gain their permissions and access to their information and data. Next is research. Collect the data you need. This will be a mixture of numerical, raw data, observational data, observations by you and your people, and reported information, reported by the people involved in whatever process you're studying. This can be through interviews, through focus groups, or through questionnaires, for example. When you have your data, step three is to analyze it. Start by evaluating and preparing the data that you've collected. Organize it so it's ready for proper analysis. Perform a comparison between the data you've collected and your own organizational data. Use that to understand the gaps, the differences in the data, and then start to figure out which of those differences are salient to the performance that really matters to you. Finally, look for the potential causal differences between the performance levels of your organization and the target benchmarking organization. When you think you understand what levers you need to pull to make changes in your performance, you can move on to the next step. Step four is implementation. Identify how to address the differences. Then create a project plan and secure approval to carry it out. Once you have approval, you can deliver the change project and monitor the progress. Now we are in our sweet spot as project managers because we are managing and delivering a project. But in this case, it's a benchmarking project. Please do give this video a like if you've enjoyed it or learned from it. I'll be creating loads more great project management videos for you, so please do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of them. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.